Hey guys, Nadja here. Welcome back to my channel. Thank you guys for coming back. Um, if you are new, I just want to say welcome. Please go ahead and like this video, share it, um, as well as subscribe. All right, guys, I will basically try my best to not be before you guys all morning with this word because um, it, it is... It's a lot that the Lord um, allowed me to look into and, and read and study. And my this is one thing I want to say. My goal, because there is so much that is going around. There is so much word that's being spoken. And one thing, and I have said this many times, I do not proclaim to be a prophet okay do I believe that the Lord gives me word in my study time every time I study that he knows I will share that will uplift or bring revelation to someone else absolutely because every time we open that Bible we know that the word is a living word right and so because it's a living word. It is giving opportunity for our father, Abba, to speak to us, to reveal to us what's on his heart. And he will do it even more when he knows that the person is going to be open and willing to be used. OK, we are all as a body of Christ have a responsibility to in some shape or form to evangelize okay we all have a ministry or should anyway that being said you know the lord will may have had you reading in your word the beginning of that morning and then while you're at work led you to share what he revealed to you that could be taking place in somebody else's life. So um, I I do not play around with being I don't like the idea of calling myself a prophetess, calling myself a prophet. Does the Lord speak to me prophetically? Yes. OK. And so when I come and bring this information to you, um, it's because the Lord desires for what has been brought forth to be spoken to uplift someone else who just may be having that same situation that he spoke to me in my study time to uh, and that's why we always say test the spirit to make sure that first of all anything I give you is scripture but you still want to test the spirit to make sure that this is a word that is for you that it's something that the Lord presented for you, okay, for the season and the time that you are in, all right? And the reason I'm saying this is because there are so many, and I said this on TikTok, there are so many people that are popping up all over the place and giving themselves the title of prophetess and prophet. And when you actually stop to listen to what they're saying and, and really dissect what they're saying based on the word of God, based on scripture, based on how we know the Holy Spirit moves, you will quickly see that there are some, they will give you, they will give you things that will make you say, oh wow, she's, you know, she's speaking the truth because she's teaching against idolatry. She's teaching against uh, witchcraft. She's teaching against this. But then you hear something very small and simple, like the person asking for you to send them a picture of you and your family that they're asking for prayer. So if I came to this person and I'm asking them for prayer and guidance and they say, I'm going to keep you uplifted. I'm going to pray for you. And they ask for your picture. Little things like that. 
We don't need a picture of anybody to uplift them in prayer, to go before the Father. The Lord is the King of Kings. He is the Lord of Lords. He knows that when you open your mouth to intercede for someone who you're speaking about just by name, because he knows your interaction with that person that that day, that previous day, that month ago, a year ago, whenever he knows. So when someone asks for a picture in order to pray for you, the first thing comes to my mind is they're going to put that picture on an altar. Okay, so be very careful. You have to look and listen, I'm just being led by the spirit right now. I, this was not in my plan to speak about this, the beginning of this message. But be very careful. Okay, because I also hear people who have the name prophetess in their title and yet they are also telling people that uh, their interaction or some of the people one person that came to her said something about um, her thinking that a demon was approaching her or that was oppressing her coming against her communicating with her and the prophetess said it's not a demon but it's a, a ancestor spirit that's present now if you read your bible and you know that the word of god clearly says in ecclesiastes that when we die we know nothing there is no further reward on this earth you will immediately discern that what she just said and if you're supposed to be a prophetess she clearly said, I hear the Holy Spirit saying it's an ancestral spirit that is visiting you. Then you know she's not hearing from the Holy Spirit. You know she's hearing from a familiar spirit and she is a witch. So I want people to just really, really listen closely. OK. And I do believe that there are some people who may also have. A desire to speak the truth um, you know God's Word but yet they maybe are just not as educated as they should be before speaking okay we all make mistakes we may say something that may not be all the way right so that's why you have to pray and test the Spirit because the person may be operating through the Holy Spirit and just was uneducated about a topic they spoke on okay so allow the Holy Spirit to confirm if a person is false or if they are just uneducated in what they're speaking about, because that can also happen. OK, but I don't ever want people to come to my page, hear my, the word that I'm sharing and think that I'm coming to you um, as a prophet. I'm sharing what the Lord revealed to me in my study time, because I go before him asking for him to reveal what's on his heart and study and read the word and I come share it knowing that the Lord has someone in mind who it might be for okay now that that oh and let me say this stop asking people to say the person's name okay it has nothing to do with someone revealing and exposing a person's name what it's about is assisting the body of Christ with being able to recognize and learn how to discern. Because if it's not that person, I could give somebody's name and you may say, OK, I'm going to stop following this person or listening to this person. But if you have not learned OK, as a um, believer, how to discern, how to test the spirit, then it will just be somebody else that you'll fall victim to. Does that make sense? So this is about teaching you how to discern, not coming to just tell you about one particular person or two people or whoever. So stop asking people to give a name. OK, that's just you being messy. And that's just you desiring to create mess. 
Okay, let me go ahead and get started in this word. Um, what the Lord revealed to me was in reference to something about miscarriage. Now we know that the word miscarriage basically means to to lose something. Okay, for something that you had or that belonged to you that was lost. Now in the Greek concordance, the word miscarriage means an untimely birth or abortion. And what the Lord uh, reveals in my spirit when I was studying this was not a literal miscarriage of a baby, but the birth of uh, a promise, the premature, you know, abortion of something that you were believing for or that you pushed for or that you tried to create outside of the following or the direction of the Lord. Okay. And so when we do that, we end up experiencing bereavement just as you would if it was miscarriage of a baby. Because when we are birthing something, when we are pregnant with something that the Lord's placed in our in us and it ends up birthing prematurely. It does not have the same effect that the Lord would have expected. And so it ends up being aborted. The purpose ends up being aborted. And so um, him bringing that to my attention was then referenced in Numbers 622. Okay, verse I'm sorry, chapter six, verse 22 through 27. And it talks about where only when the camp was in order and they were prepared for the march was when God gave his blessing and his protection and his presence and his peace. Okay. Through the benediction that was pronounced by the priests. So by this blessing, God then linked his name and that is his character with the people of Israel. That being said, every, everybody must be on one accord. Everything must be in order before the Lord will attach his name, before he attaches his presence, his protection and his peace to a purpose that is a, that that he's given you okay and a lot of times we don't realize that when we step outside of god and we're no longer on the right path that he has placed before us some of us it's not intentional some of us it's not being obedient and giving time to the lord seeking his leadership seeking his guidance so that we can make sure that we're on the right path a lot of times we move ahead of God I've been there done that where the Lord may speak something and then we are so excited about what we think the Lord has said that we step out and we partake in certain interactions or um, certain movements and connecting with certain people creating certain things and we don't realize that that's not what the Lord said to do. And so when we're outside of his will, things are not coming together. Then his presence and his protection and his guidance and peace in that thing is not there. OK, you've basically birthed it prematurely and the purpose has been lost. OK, this now, I want you guys to stay with me because there are certain parts of this that can come across as being a harsh word based on the scripture. But the Lord will always give a harsh word, but then he will call for edification. Um, he will call for hope in the end so that you're not left with feeling as though, you know, you're on the wrong path, but there's no hope. OK, Deuteronomy 28, 47 and 48, because you did not serve the Lord your God with joy and with gladness of heart 
for the abundance of everything. Therefore, you shall serve your enemies whom the Lord will send against you in hunger and thirst in nakedness and in need of everything. And he will put a yoke of iron on your neck until he has destroyed you. We may justly expect for God that if we do not fear his fearful name, we shall feel his fearful plagues. For one way or other, God will be feared. They will have no rest, no rest of body, but be continually on the remove, either in hope of gain or fear of persecution. No rest of the mind, which is worse. Let us be thankful that Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, but that they may prevent it by a true and timely repentance or else be left without a, without excuse. I know that was a lot, but it was almost as if the Lord presented presented that to me to be a reminder of where we were as a people, okay? Because there was no fear of the Lord. There was no fear of him. And so before Christ it was it was it was it. It was doomed. We were doomed, right? So once Christ came and he redeemed us from the curse of the law, we now have access to repent and get in right standing. So the important part of this message is to make sure that you're in the right heart posture and go before the Lord in repentance. Okay? And as you listen more into this word, you will kind of understand where you fall if this is for you in this area. Okay, because this is it can be taken different ways, but it's it's somewhat specific for a certain group of people. Okay. So again, that last part. Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, but that they may prevent it, okay prevented by a true and timely repentance or else you can be left without excuse if you don't repent then you're left without any excuse for your for your position and what you experience okay uh, he then showed me and i read about samson's bride pagan bride all right the timnite and samson aired when they rushed into the serious commitment of marriage based upon initial infatuation and physical attraction. Neither had left their father and mother in order to give primary loyalty to one another. First and foremost, how many of us, I have, I can say that I have been, what's the word Lord? <laughs> Um, I have been rescued. That's the only thing that's coming to my mind. I have been rescued from being a person that used to fall into that. Okay. I've been healed, restored from being a person who used to be pulled into that. Okay. Where there is a physical attraction <clears throat> an initial if infatuation with what the person might look like or bring to the table. Okay. So oh, how the person looks, how they may dress their, you know, lifestyle in general, um, their career. There's so many different physical things. Okay. Physical attractions that we may see and hear that may draw us in to where you don't even really think about the seriousness of being committed to this person because a covenant has been created when you go into marriage, right? And so Samson and his pagan bride did this and neither of them left their father or their mother to truly be 
committed to one another in a marriage. All right. She was more concerned about herself and self preservation, which is protecting herself. And neither reached beyond self to be concerned about the other. Neither had considered the ramifications of being linked to one another. And who did not have the same spiritual commitments? They did not have the same spiritual commitments. She was a pagan. Okay. And he was a believer in Christ. So when we are connected to a curse because that's what it would be. We are not in order or alignment with God's protection, his presence, nor do we experience his blessings, as I said in the beginning, okay? So for many, this is in reference to either where your mindset might be right now in reference to your desire to be married and the Lord's trying to catch you where you are mentally and change that mindset so that you can begin to think like the Lord would desire you to think before he brings someone into your life. Or this could be someone who is currently involved with someone and he is bringing this to your attention before a covenant is created. Okay. The Lord has given me very similar words to this more than one time. And then sometimes he gives different scripture that's a little more, a little stronger, okay, in his seriousness of you understanding why this is important, okay? Marriage to a foreign woman or a man who was not committed to the God of Israel was strictly forbidden, all right? Such intermarriage, which is what it's called, intermarriage, was um, a definite factor. Listen to the word definite. Okay? What does the word definite mean in this context? The definition of definite is clearly defined or determined, not vague or general, fixed or precise. It is definite. Okay, it is fixed. So it's saying such intermarriage was definite. It was a definite factor in the destruction of the nation. So I want you to think about that for a second. The Lord does not change. He stays the same. So if intermarriage was this important in order to keep from destroying the nation. If it was this important, then it is even just important now. So the importance of you not joining, okay, with someone who is God's standard of a believer, not just someone who says, I am a Christian, okay? There are plenty of people that will say, I'm a Christian. And so immediately when we meet them because we say that they're because they say they're a Christian and because they are going to church, we jump for joy and just assume that that is enough. People who hold the title of being a Christian, it doesn't make them a true believer and follower of Christ. OK. Samson was an Israelite who was committed to Yahweh, but he was also a Nazarite, which is set apart by God in a special way. So many of you, based on your calling, based on your purpose, based on what God desires to do in your life and how he desires to use you, you're set apart. You're not just a believer in Yahweh. You're not just a believer in Jesus. You have a special calling and are set apart, many of you. I know that, that was that's me. Which means not just anybody can come up in your space, say they are a, a Christian, and it's all good. No, no, no. No, no, no. Because the Lord can see beyond what's coming out their mouth. 
the Lord can see the spirits attached to them. It, he can see the things that they need deliverance from. He can see the plan that the enemy may have a, a foothold in their life that they may not even, even realize. You know what I mean? There's so many different things. Their, their mind or their mouth may be saying, I'm a, I'm a Christian, but their heart says something totally different. Their actions may be something totally different. Okay? So for a judge... To fall in this area shows the far reaching result of spiritual apathy. I'm going to say that again. Then I'm going to give you the definition of apathy. Okay. For a judge, because Samson was a judge. For a judge to fall in this area shows that the far reaching result of spiritual apathy. That this was a far-reaching result of spiritual apathy, which is a lack of feeling, a lack of emotion, interest, or concern about something, a lack of motivation or concern for the things of the spirit. Because as you heard me say, I said spiritual apathy. My God. So this was a far reaching result of spiritual apathy, which means Samson had lost his motivation spiritually. He lost his concern, his feeling or his emotion and interest in regards to the things of the spirit because of his association with this pagan woman who he married this marriage put Samson on the road to estrangement with Yahweh, which is complete distance and lack of relationship. And so this is what the Lord is saying would be, what would happen if you are not serious about an understanding how serious this is, with who you connect with. Yes. God has given us free will. And trust me. With free will. If I utilized that free will. To do what I wanted to do. And go outside of what the Lord wanted me to do. There's several people I could go to. And, and accept a marriage proposal. Right. Right. But I know the standard that God is going to send me. And so therefore, there is no, you know, because I desire this, that I'm going to do what I want to do. Okay. The enemy has tried so hard, so hard to deceive me in the area of this for so long. Even as, as recent as last year. But when I tell you the need to, to stay close to the Lord, the need to stay close to um, communing with him, staying at his feet, picking up your cross daily so that you are not deceived by what seems like it could be confirmations in, in God. You won't be deceived. All right. And so then after that, the Lord then showed me, um, he, he, he took me right into talking about marriage and problem solving, because some of you, uh, have already put yourself in this position. You've already created a covenant with, with, with the wrong person, or I would say the person that God did not select for you based on who you should have been connected to for purpose because marriage is not about it's it's not just about you having a um a partner okay and you having a best friend or you having someone to be intimate with ultimately it's about purpose okay so some of you are already in these situations have already created the covenant 
And the Lord was is not going to say, hey, go and divorce these, pe this, these people unless you are in a situation where you're being abused. You know, I would never tell anybody to stay in a marriage where they're being physically abused, okay? Um, because especially if it is the husband, then you are typically, you have someone that's leading your household that is being led by Satan. He's not being led by the Holy Spirit, okay? So in problem solving in your marriage, problems can be a negative weapon in a marriage, dividing hearts and destroying the unity or they can be a positive catalyst for recommitment and renewal okay so the most important part is for you to recognize that there's going to be problems in any marriage no marriage is going to be perfect no marriage is going to um <laughs> No marriage is going to be something that you go into that isn't going to be work. I've been married before. Marriage is work. Okay? And it takes both people to be on the same accord. But in order for that problem that you're, that you're experiencing to be solved, it cannot be solved separate from God. It cannot be solved separate from the Holy Spirit. Okay? In 1 Kings 21 through 25, the Lord is, is, he was just giving it to me, okay? 1 Kings 21, um, verse 25 through 29, it talks about Ahab, okay? And when Ahab humbled himself, all right? He humbled himself after his influence of a wickedness from his wife, Jezebel. Now, when I saw this, I was like, I don't remember this part, but I went back through it and read it. And yes, Ahab humbled himself after his influence of wickedness from his wife Jezebel and calamity. Then let me tell you, let me just listen to this, okay? Because this is what should also help you understand the importance of making sure you marry and connect to the right person. Because... Because he was influenced into wickedness because of his wife, calamity still came on his son's house. Although the Lord did not give it to him, scripture says calamity would still come on his son's house. Okay? So, us being led by our passions, by our desires based on somebody being fine or beautiful and you not being spiritually led into making a choice to create a covenant with somebody, it is not just going to affect you. We're talking about generational things that will be passed in the spirit to your children. It's no different than when we open up spiritual doors to Satan through witchcraft, um, through idolatry. And it doesn't get fixed with us. It passes to our children, to our bloodline. So it is the same thing when you are joining with the wrong person and you are influenced and steered away and estranged from the Lord. Okay that you create all these other issues that are branched off from that decision. Okay. So the Lord gave me all this stuff just to help us understand the ramifications of our actions. What truly happens in the spirit, what truly happens, you know, to us, to the purpose. All right. Now in Nehemiah 310, the wall repaired. Guys, pay attention to this, because when the Lord gave me this, I'm like, yes, Lord. Yes. The wall repaired. The rebuilding the walls of Jerusalem, the work was divided. Okay. So that everyone might know what he had to do and mind it. So when we're repairing, when we're restoring something, the work is divided. 
because we are a body and we all have work to do. Okay. But it's so that everyone might know what they have to do and mind it. Mind what the Lord has called for you to do. Mind your business and do it. Okay. So think about that. In the rebuilding of the wall, in the rebuilding of our lives, in the rebuilding of the body of Christ, is what he's saying. Okay. Because a lot of our decisions, as it said in the beginning, the decisions that we make affect the nation. Not just our household, but the nation, because we are set apart. Many of us are set apart for a purpose. So yes, something as small as you think is small, connected in marriage, affects a nation. So in the process of rebuilding the body of Christ, okay? Stay with me. In the process of rebuilding that wall, the work is divided so that everyone might know what he has to do and mind it with a desire to excel without contention or separate inches interests. So that means without arguments, without confusion, without thinking about yourself and without any separate interests. That's your main focus is on rebuilding this wall. Your main focus is on doing what the Lord has called you to do. Your main focus is obedience. Okay? And understanding that you are here for purpose. Understanding that you and your walk is not just about you and your walk. But it's about you and the nation and the um, generations to come. Okay? Okay? Every Israelite should lend a hand toward the building up of Jerusalem. So all of us should be lending a hand. As I said in the beginning, we all have a part. We all have a ministry, no matter how small, okay, or big. We all have a part. And if we all are working towards the interests of that, then a lot can be accomplished. Okay? When a general good work is to be done, each should apply himself to that part which is within his reach. Okay? So when a general work, when there is work to be done, every person should apply themselves to that part of which is in your reach which is in your ability to do. You should be applying yourself to do that. If it is in your reach to minister to the people who are in your job, if it is in your reach to minister to the other parents that are, you know, a part of your child's, you know, football team, if it is in your reach, then it should be done. If everyone will sweep Listen carefully. If everyone will sweep before his own door, the street will be clean. Now, thank you, Holy Spirit. Do not take that and run with it in another direction. Because a lot of people will say, oh, if we worry about ourselves and not worry about other people, we'll all be, we'll all be good. That's not what they're saying. What they're saying is if we all do our part, if we all make sure that we are being obedient, then the street will be clean. If we know that we have a duty that God has given us to pick up a broom and sweep the dust from in front of our house so that it's clean, we need to make sure that we're living in obedience to what the Lord told us to do. Okay? So the part about unjust or unrighteous judgment is when you are trying to um, correct someone and you haven't swept your own door. So that's like me coming outside of my front door with dust everywhere and going and knocking on my neighbor's door and saying, hey, you're, you have all this dirt outside your door. You need to get your broom and sweep it. That is unrighteous judgment. That is you basically telling somebody else something to do that you're not doing yourself. But we are called to judge righteously. 
which means to judge based on what scripture says to do as long as we're not being a hypocrite and doing exactly not doing exactly what we're telling somebody else to do so i can't tell you to live a pure life i can't tell you to basically you know not be fornicating and to be abstinent if i'm out sleeping around okay i can't tell you that so i just had to the holy spirit just led me to say mm, this this is not the same thing okay pay attention we all have a purpose we just all need to be making sure that we are actually operating in our purpose being obedient and listening to the father and then that that wall will be rebuilt okay the body of christ will be able to come together if we're all working together to to, to be in right position okay if everyone would mend one okay we shall all be mended so that is also if if everyone would lend a hand to your fellow brother or sister in christ then we will all be mended okay some that had first done this helped their fellow brother and sister in christ the walls of jerusalem in heaps of rubbish represent the desperate state of the world around while the number of malice of those who hindered the building gives some faint idea of the enemies we have to contend with so think about that the walls of jerusalem in heaps of rubbish which is all in a, in a complete mess which is how we are right now it represented the desperate state of the world around us while the number of malice of those who hindered the building and it gives some faint idea of the enemies that we have to contend with there's a lot of malice that's going on that is hindering the ability for that wall to be rebuilt like dealing with false prophets dealing with people who are pretending but yet they are tearing down they are enemies as it says give some faint idea of the enemies we have to contend with while executing the word of God everyone must begin at home for it is by getting the work of God advanced in our own souls that we shall best contribute to the good of the church of Christ. May the Lord thus stir up the hearts of his people to lay aside their petty disputes and to disregard their worldly interests compared with building the walls of Jerusalem and defending the cause of truth and godliness against the assaults of avowed enemies. So as it says, if everybody made rebuilding the wall if everybody made rebuilding the body of christ living in purpose doing what the father has called for us to do in obedience and stop the petty disputes stop the worldly interests that we have our desire to be married our desire to have a fine husband our desire to not be um, abstinent anymore and just wanting somebody to lay in our bed those are worldly interests those are not godly interests our heart should be fixed on the purpose that God has called for us okay wholeheartedly it is a time to call upon the Lord if you are in this position, if this is you, if this is for you, this is a time to call upon the Lord. Call upon the Lord. This is a time for all people to praise the Lord. Psalm 117. Wisdom, understanding, knowledge. Okay. A home built on the Lord Jesus and nurtured by a woman who spends time seeking wisdom, understanding, and knowledge with the Lord each day 
will stand strong in the storms of life. That is so important in that process of building a home. As it said that I read to you previously, the long portion I read to you from Nehemiah was the commentary in Nehemiah. As you can see, they all go together. It's about your you building your home the way that the father called for your home to look. You building your home, starting within your home. Thank you, Holy Spirit. It's two parts. Building your home, starting with this. Your temple is also your home, okay? Building up your home internally to be fixed upon the Lord and his desires for your life will in turn cause your physical home to be in ex be in position the way God has called for it to look which in turn will cause the nation and the body of Christ to look the way it's supposed to look okay the Lord um, gave me Isaiah 12 1 through 6 a hymn of praise the joyful response of the Lord's people in antici is anticipated and that future day when God would deliver them. Okay. So the Lord is, is telling you there is an opportunity for restoration. All right. So regardless of where you fit in this place, regardless of where you fit in this, whether you are believing for marriage and you're not there yet, okay? Whether you are already engaged or um, courting with someone and discussion of marriage is taking place. Or whether you have already married someone and you know that person is not the right one. It's time for you to call upon the Lord, okay? I don't believe even in that situation that all is lost because the Lord is in control. So, okay, I'm, I'm going to leave it there. Then God, the Lord Jesus, showed me back to back just from flipping, not looking from th for this, but he showed me God will restore Israel. Ezekiel eleven fourteen. I flipped again and then he showed me again. I'm sorry. First, he showed me God will restore Israel in Jeremiah 16, 14. The future restoration of Israel would surpass the ancient deliverance from Egypt. He showed me that first. Then when I flipped, he showed me God will restore Israel in Ezekiel eleven fourteen. 14. Okay. So after coming from all the harsh road word, um, he's then showing it, it still is going to his, his will is still going to be done. He's still going to restore Israel hit the body of Christ. He's still going to restore Israel. Before you are able to understand the vision, you need strength and encouragement. So a lot of you may not understand the vision that the Lord has for you because you need strength and you need encouragement. But allow that strength to come from God. Allow that strength and that encouragement to come from his word. All right? Commitment in following Jesus. Commitment in following Jesus. Hold on, I'm supposed to read something in my Bible. I don't have it. Hold on. Following Jesus is the definition of commitment. Commitment demands a choice. Jesus wasted no time getting to the heart of commitment. Okay. Commitment definitely limits choice because it is exclusive. For example, in a commitment to marriage, God's plan is for one woman and one man to commit to each other exclusively and permanently. Commitment builds up faith and it develops character. It is a spiritual discipline. It is a lifetime venture requiring time, work, and determination. This is what the Lord is calling for you to do. That type of commitment to him is what's going to put you in a position to hear understand and to walk in whatever he's called for you to do how he's called for you to do it your commitment first starts with him if you are committed to him 
and walking with him and being led by him and surrendered to him, everything else is going to be based off of his guiding and his leading. So you're not going to end up in a situation that's pulling you in because of physical attraction. You're going to be led by the spirit. You're going to know exactly what is for you and what isn't because you're going to be always having your ear open to hear. Father, is this is this you? Father, is this the devil? You're going to always be in expectation of him confirming things to you. Whether, rather than you just moving in your flesh and your feeling. Okay? You're going to be led by the spirit, not by the soul. Okay? Your soul is your mind, your will. And your emotions. You don't need to be led by your emotions when it comes to stuff like this. All right. So take that into consideration as far as what your commitment to Jesus needs to be about. As I said, it builds up your faith and it develops character. Your character is very important. It's a spiritual discipline. If you don't have spiritual discipline, it will be hard for you to do this walk. It's a lifetime venture. It is not a right now venture. It's a lifetime venture. And it requires your time. It requires work. And it requires your determination. If you're not determined to do what the Lord has called for you to do, you're, it's not going to work. It's, it's just not. Now, in that, there is the promise of the Holy Spirit, which is your guide. The promise of the Holy Spirit is your guide. John 7, 37. Now, 1 Corinthians 7.14, I did not realize this until I looked at the notes in my Bible where it talks about, um, it, it, it basically talks about, I'm just going to um, sum it up, okay? In that scripture, it talks about how um, if you're married to, if you marry an unbeliever, if you're married to an unbeliever, that the wife can sanctify the husband, um, you guys know which one I'm talking about, right? But when I look into the notes and I start studying more about that particular scripture, I realize the Lord was saying something. And that we've been we've been taking this 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 scripture out of context, and a lot of you've been using this to your advantage, and you've been using it wrong. Okay. This scripture says, or it's in reference to, it refers to two non-Christians. Listen carefully. It refers to two non-Christians and one being converted in marriage. Two non-Christians getting married, one being converted to Jesus Christ and being a follower. Okay? It's not in reference to one Christian, one person being a Christian already and the other person not being a Christian and it's okay for you to go ahead and marry that person and then believe that you can sanctify the other. That's not what that scripture is talking about. It's actually in reference to two people that are not Christian, not believers, and they get married. And then one person becomes converted to being a believer and they're believing for that other person to become a believer as well. But a lot of people see that and they're like, okay, um, this scripture is telling me that I can go and marry somebody that I know is not a believer because I feel in my heart that I can change him. When scripture clearly says that intermarriage, as I said in the beginning, is forbidden. It clearly said that marrying a foreign person, which is a person who is not a believer. Now, let me break that down because that, again, that does not mean that the person... Um, just because they say I'm a Christian, that they don't fall in that category. If they say they're a Christian and they're going to church, but yet they're living in sin, they are no different than an unbeliever. There is a difference between a person who is a believer, who is literally striving to pick up their cross every day, to live in righteousness, and they fall short, and they may fall short every day. But they are immediately going before the Father, confessing their sin. They're repenting. They're repenting and asking for the Lord to help change their heart. There's a difference between that 
and somebody who goes to church says they're a Christian but they're in a fraternity fraternity or sorority and they're always at the picnics and they're always at the club they have a foul mouth they just there you can't tell the difference between them and someone of the world okay so you have to be discerning of this don't think that because the person says they're Christian and they go to church but they live a lifestyle of sin that it is okay for you to marry them all right and then thinking that you're going to change them and you're going to convert convert them that you're going to get them to renounce their fraternity or masonic okay i've been in that situation before the person was is a believer the person does not really have a relationship with the Lord. They say they're a believer. They don't really go to church, but they're a Mason, not necessarily active, but had not renounced. Okay. And the Lord was like, heck no. Heck no. Because of the attachments, the open doors that you may not see that may tear you completely down five years from now after you said I do all right that is the importance of us making sure that we are completely committed to the Lord so that we are walking with him and we know exactly because we don't know what is ahead he does we have no clue what is ahead but if we're not following him we're gonna walk right into a trap a covenant trap then the Lord showed me marriage again in my Bible and it's talking about God's provision for marriage. Okay, his provision. When both husband and wife know the Lord as personal savior, the Holy Spirit lives in their hearts. Okay, as they submit to his lordship, they are enabled to follow his directions. They're able to follow his directions through their submission, right? The Holy Spirit, I'm sorry, the husband will be empowered to love his wife as Christ loved the church and the wife will be inspired to submit as unto the Lord. The atmosphere of the home will become one of joy as hurtful attitudes are laid aside Forgiveness and kindness will become house rules. Couples are enabled to overcome temptation with faithfulness to each other when husband and wife give their expectations to God and focus on the good, then peace will rule in their hearts and in their home. Peace will rule in your heart and in your home. In your home, which is your temple, Peace will be in your temple and it will be in your physical home. And that peace is the Holy Spirit. As I said in the very beginning of this message, that both people, everybody has to be on one accord for the presence of God to come in and attach his character and his name and his peace and his protection on it. You both got to be together on one accord for him to come in in agreement. Okay. The Lord is calling for reconciliation to Christ. Colossians 1.20 um, Education taught in order to teach. You are educated through the word and the Holy Spirit so that you are able to teach for purpose. Okay. The Holy Spirit is there to teach and to reveal certain things to you so that you are able to pass it on and teach others. He showed me the race of faith in Hebrews 12. I advise you to read that. And then fruit of the spirit is faithfulness. He is calling for your faithfulness. Your faithfulness. And then lastly, patience. Because a lot of you are in these positions because of your lack of patience. Regardless of how long it's been that you feel like you've been by yourself and that you've been waiting on the promise, the Lord is calling for your patience. 
listen, I have been single. Now, when I say single, meaning not in a relationship, I have been single for 10 years. Now, I've only been back with the Lord living righteously since 2020, the end of 2019 and 2020. So as being in the position of growing in Christ and picking up my cross and being pruned and being prepared, okay, he's preparing me. It's only literally been four years. He was not going to put me in a marriage when I wasn't right, when my purpose is what I'm what I'm being built to do right now. OK. But listen, you still can't help but think about the fact that if you desire relationship, you desire companionship and you desire love. I still haven't been in a relationship in 10 years. But I am willing to wait as long as the Lord tells me to wait until that right person is prepared because he's being prepared. I'm being prepared so that we can come together. OK, I have no idea. Some people say they know who that person is. I have no idea who that person is. And I don't need to know it until the Lord desires to reveal that to me. OK. So, guys, I am going to end there because this is a long word. But you know what? I feel that whoever it is for, they're going to listen to it. You're going to be drawn to understand what's being said. And if it's for you, you will take it before the Lord and you will con you will confirm it with the Lord, as I always say. OK, guys. Whew. All right. I love you guys and I'll see you in my next video. God bless you. Bye.